In this video, I'm going to write a C program to generate lottery numbers. So the way most lotteries typically work is you'll have a bunch of balls bouncing around some container. And each ball will have a unique number on it along some range from say one to 59. So ball one, ball two, ball three, all the way up to ball 59. And then eventually some number of those balls are pulled out of the container for the winning lottery numbers. So maybe six balls are pulled out. And what you'd be left with then is six numbers from one to 59 but with no repeats. So there wouldn't be say like two number sevens in your winning numbers. So some example winning lottery numbers could look like this. Six numbers from one to 59 with no repeats. So to solve this problem with the C program, we're gonna have to do two things. We're gonna have to actually generate random numbers between one and 59. And we're also gonna have to make sure that those numbers are unique. So we'll solve one problem at a time. The first thing we're gonna do is include stdlib.h because that library includes the functions for generating random numbers. We're also going to include time.h because that includes a helpful time function and we'll include stdbool.h so we can use a boolean type variable as well. So the first thing we're going to do is actually seed the random number generator. So when we go to generate random numbers in C, C has what's called pseudo random number generation. If we don't first seed the random number generator with some value that's going to be different every time our program runs, we're actually going to get back the same random numbers each time. What we need to do is seed the random number generator with a different value each time our program runs. So to do that, I'm going to say srand, and this function is where we provide the seed. Now for seed, I'm going to provide the value time null. So time is a function from the time.h library. And when we give it the argument null, it's going to return the current time. Now we're going to use that as a seed because every time we run our program, it's going to be a different time, even if only slightly. And therefore, we're always going to be providing a different seed. And we're always going to get back different random numbers. So now that we've got that, we're going to actually generate the random number from 1 to 59. And we'll make six of them. So I'll say here, int number, we'll make a variable to store the numbers. And then I'll make a loop. I'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than six, i plus plus. I'm gonna say number is equal to rand. Now rand is the function that's gonna actually generate the random number. And it's gonna be a number from zero to some very, very high integer value. So it's gonna make zero, one, two, three, four, all the way up to some very, very high integer value. And we don't know which integer it's gonna be, it's gonna be random, but it's gonna be in that range of zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to some very high value. What we need though, is a number in the range of one to 59. So a common technique to actually take this random value and put it in a range that we want is to use the modulus operator. So I'm gonna say here rand modulus 59. So the way the modulus operator works is it's gonna take this value here and do divide by 59. But what modulus gives you back is actually the remainder of that division operation. So if we take some large integer value, whatever it is, and we do modulus 59, we know we're gonna get back a number in the range of zero to 58. Because if you take any large positive integer value and do a division by 59, the remainder has to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 58. So this here will always give us back a number in the range 0 to 58, just by virtue of the way that remainders work in division. Now what we, what we really want is a number in the range 1 to 59. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this here and we're going to add 1 to it. So we'll take this here, add one to it, and that's gonna shift up the range to one to 59. So now we've got a number between one and 59, and we could just print it out initially. So we'll just say here, printf, and we'll just output the number. We'll say number, percent %d, percent %d, we'll output i plus one, we'll output the number itself. So if I save this here and run this, we get six random numbers here, in the range of one to 59. If I run it again, 
I get six different numbers and I can run it again and I'll get six different numbers. Now, eventually though, if I keep running this enough times, what we should get is a repeat. And so here, for example, we get 17 and 17 and they're identical. We can't have that. So what we're going to have to do is write some code that's actually going to identify when this has occurred and prevent it. So the way we're going to solve this problem is we're going to have an array that's going to keep track of the random numbers we've made so far. If we ever create a random number that is already in that array, then we're going to have to make the number again because it's not valid. We can't have a repeat. So I'll say here int numbers six. So I'm going to have an array of six numbers. That's going to keep track of the numbers I've generated so far. I'm also going to have a bool. I'm going to say bool unique. I'm going to use that to keep track of whether the number we've just made is unique or not. I'm going to put this here now inside a do while loop. So I'll say do make the number and I'll say while not unique. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying keep making this number keep generating this random number here until we have it that the number is unique. So, so long as the number is not unique, we're going to keep generating it again and again. So next we have to establish is the number unique or not. So what I'm going to do is start off with the assumption that the number is unique and then I'll search this numbers array for the number. If we find it, then we know that it's not unique. So we start off with the assumption the number is unique. Then I'll have a for loop here. I'll say for int j is equal to zero, j is less than i, because i is keeping track of the amount of numbers we've made so far, j plus plus. And then here I can say if numbers at j is equal to the number, then at that point, unique is going to be false. So in other words, if we can find the number in this array of numbers that we've already generated, then we know it's not unique. And so long as it's not unique, we want to keep doing this because we have to find a unique number. Once we have found a unique number, we can add it to this numbers array. So we'll say down here, numbers at i is equal to number. And this will then keep track of that number in the numbers array. And as before, we can just print out the number. So if we save this here now and run it, we're going to get unique numbers each time we run this program because we're guarding against the possibility of the same number appearing twice by keeping track of the previous numbers that we've randomly generated. So here we have the code for generating lottery numbers with a C program. We could take this a bit further if we wanted. Sometimes lotteries will have a special number that's maybe got a different range. So maybe a number from one to 70 or something like that. If we wanted to generate a number like that, we could just follow the same technique here. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.